Today, we're going to finish what we started last week with eight more settings that you may not have known about in Windows. Stay tuned. And there's even more than this. Last week, we went through eight settings in Windows, and if you missed that video, I'll go ahead and tag it here so you can take a look at it. However, this video is gonna be just as good. I compiled another eight settings for Windows, just like last week. Take some notes through this video and write down in the comments below if there's anything new that you didn't know about before. And also, stay tuned to the end of the video because I have a bonus tip that I'm almost positive you guys didn't know about, in fact, this one blew my mind. So instead of talking about it all day, let's get on the computer and I'll just show you. So last week we started with a fresh load of Windows 10 for this video. However, a lot of these settings will work in Windows 11 as well. It might just be a little bit different on how to find them. But if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below and I'll try to help you out on that. But this week, this is the same install that we had last week. So it's almost a fresh install. It's had several settings changed, in fact, eight of them in fact. So to start out with, the first setting that I wanna show you here is in Windows Explorer. So go ahead and fire up Windows Explorer. And then what we're gonna to wanna to do is go over to the View tab. And then from the View tab, we wanna click on Options. And then in Options, what we're looking at is the Open File Explorer 2. You might notice that by default it opens to quick access, and that's this section right here. It's essentially your frequently used folders, your recent files, and OneDrive if you haven't uninstalled it yet. But if you change this to this PC, it'll act more like older versions of Windows. So let's go ahead and do that and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So if we close File Explorer now and then reopen it, you'll see that we're opening in our this PC instead of Quick Access. Now, this setting actually came from a subscriber that commented on a previous video when I complained about this. However, I don't remember who it was. So if that was you, make a comment below so everyone can thank you. Okay, so while we're in File Explorer, let me show you another neat little tip here. If you look at the top, you can see this is called your quick access bar. This is essentially the very, very top of the screen. And if you look at this little arrow right here, if you click on that, you can add other things to this. So for instance, let's go ahead and put the undo command and you can see now it says undo, or we can even do the redo command right here. And the way this works is I'm gonna go ahead and let's say we're gonna create a document here. So we'll create a document right there. Now let's say we wanna delete this document. So we'll go ahead and delete it. But now if we hit the undo, it brings it back. And if we hit the redo, it goes away again. That may seem like kind of a silly setting, but when you need it, that comes in really handy. Okay, so the next setting we're gonna look at, we're gonna close this and I'm gonna go ahead and open up settings and we wanna to go to update and security. Now what I'm gonna show you here is how you can actually delay updates for a period of time. A lot of people complain that Windows 10 and Windows 11 update way too often. Well doesn't necessarily have to be the case. If you go into Windows Update, you'll notice that it gives you the opportunity to pause updates for up to seven days. And if you click on that, your updates will be paused. However, you can continue to click on that button. And if you notice right here, it continues to make the calendar go up. And you can click on it a total of about a month's worth of updates or so. And another way you can do this is if you go down into Advanced Options, and down to the bottom, you can see pause updates right here. And this will tell you when updates are gonna resume on Wednesday, March 9th. And depending on when this video is gonna be released, it's actually being filmed on February 2nd. So that's about five weeks from now. So if we click on this thing, this will give you a whole range of different dates all the way up to March 9th. So I can come all the way down and say, I only want to pause them for one day. You can do that just like that. I actually use this setting most of the time when I'm preparing to film for videos. Once I get a video laid out, I'll go ahead and pause updates until that video is filmed, you know, just to make it a little bit easier on me. But there's all kinds of different reasons why you would wanna pause Windows Update. And now you know how to do it. Okay, so while we're in settings, I'm gonna go ahead and click Home, and then I'm gonna click on Personalization. And from personalization, I wanna click on colors. Now, everybody knows that you can either have the light or dark theme. So if we go into the light theme, it turns everything in the system white. It, you have a white taskbar, you have a light colored settings panel, but if you turn it to dark, 
it goes the opposite. You have a dark colored settings panel and a dark colored taskbar and start menu and whatnot. However, what a lot of people don't realize is you can actually mix and match them. So if we go into custom right here, we can choose the windows mode and the app mode. If we were to go light in the windows mode, it will actually turn the windows sections light, but it'll keep the different apps and stuff like that dark. Or you can go vice versa. You can go dark on that and light on this, and it'll give your different apps the light theme while it gives the taskbar the dark theme. And I think this is pretty handy, and this is the way I typically set my computer up, is I have it be light mode with the apps and dark mode with the different taskbars and things like that. So the next setting we're gonna look at, we're gonna go ahead and close settings, click on the start button, and I wanna type in control panel. And then from control panel, we want to go to system and security. Then we wanna go down into power options. And then from power options right here, you'll notice that we have balanced and power saving. What I typically recommend in this is to go ahead and click this down arrow and select high performance. Now the high performance power profile will allow the system to run faster and it does actually give you a pretty good improvement normally. However, if you're doing this on a mobile device, just keep in mind that the high performance profile can kill your battery faster. So if you're on a mobile device, this might not be a setting that you wanna change, but if battery life isn't important to you, then go ahead and change it because it will speed your computer up. All right, so for the next setting, we're gonna go ahead and close this. I'm gonna right click on the taskbar and open up Task Manager. And then this is the way Task Manager typically comes in this little window right here. I usually recommend clicking more options so you have a fuller Task Manager. However, that's not the setting we're gonna talk about today. If you go right here to the file menus, go ahead and click on Option and we can check Always on Top. And what that will do is it will make the Task Manager always on top of whatever application is running. This comes in really handy if you're running a program that's full screen and you need to open Task Manager for whatever reason. Maybe the program you're using locked up. And for that, you can hit Control Shift Escape on your keyboard and it's a shortcut for Task Manager. And it will open the Task Manager on top of everything else so you can end whatever program it is that isn't responding. Now, this comes in really handy for games that have locked up. You know, in other cases, you'd have to just hold the power button down and crash the whole system. But it would be nice if you could open the task manager and just end the process that you're looking for. And the way you do that is by having the task manager on top, because if you try to open the task manager with a full screen program running, it will typically open it, but it will open it underneath the program you need to end. And what use is that? Okay, so the next setting I'm gonna show you here, this one here comes in really handy. I use this on every system that I have, but come down to the bottom right here and click on your notification icon. And from there, click on manage notifications. And here, this is all the notifications that Windows pops up and irritates you with all the time. And what you can do is starting at the bottom of the list, you can just start unchecking these all the way up, and then you can turn notifications off completely if you wanted to. Unfortunately, this doesn't turn off all notifications. You're still gonna get a few. Like for instance, Windows Security will give you notifications even by turning this stuff off. However, you can open Windows Security and go into the notification setting to turn those off there too. I wish Microsoft would just let us turn notifications off completely with one switch, but you know, sometimes life isn't that easy. Okay, so the next setting that I'm gonna show you guys today is go ahead and click on home, and then I want you to click on gaming. And then from gaming, we're gonna click on game mode. And here, we can actually enable or disable game mode. And to disable it, all you gotta do is flip this switch right here. Now, game mode is one of those settings that you may or may not wanna turn off. It really depends on your system. If your system is a major potato and it needs all the help it can get to play games, then it might be a good idea to leave this on. What game mode does is it tries to restrict background tasks and give more resources to the things that are important for gaming. However, in some testing that I've seen, if you're running a higher end system or a system that isn't really that limited, then game mode can actually hurt your performance. So keep that in mind. It'd be a good idea to test out game mode on or off. And if you want, I did a video a while back that shows how to test games in game in real time. And I'll go ahead and tag that video right here. So if you'd like to check it out, but it's a really good opportunity to test whether or not this setting works well on your system, and you can decide whether or not you want to turn it on or off. Now, with all that said, we're now on to the bonus tip that I promised you at the beginning of the video. Now, if you know this tip, if you already knew the 
this was possible, then you're definitely a power user because I had no idea you could do this, but it was an issue that has been driving me nuts ever since Windows 10 came out. And that's actually the stupid hiding scroll bar on Windows in Windows 10. Let me show you what I'm talking about. You'll see right on the side right here, if I move my mouse, you can see a scroll bar appears. And then if you move your mouse away, the scroll bar vanishes. And then you move it back, it comes back, and you move away, and it disappears again. This drives me absolutely nuts because a lot of times, if you don't have proper dexterity, or if you're just trying to do something really quick, and you go over to the side, Sometimes you can't grab that scroll bar when it disappears back into the window. And the way that you solve this problem is if you come over here, go ahead and click on home and then go into ease of access right here. And from ease of access, we want to click on display, which is the very first tab and then scroll down and you'll see right here, it says automatically hide scroll bars in windows. If we uncheck that, you'll see all the scroll bars appear and they never go away again. Microsoft, this is the this should be the default setting. If people want scroll bars to disappear, they should be able to go in here and just make them disappear. But to have this on at default, boy, this has caused me so much frustration. This is something that you really should turn off by default. But you know, now that you know how to turn it off, you can be with me and turn that setting off on every system I own. Hopefully you learned something in this video. If you did, don't forget to comment below and let me know which of these settings that you didn't know about. But if this video was helpful to you, then please like this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon so you can be notified of future videos. I post a new video every week. And hey, before you go, check out a couple of these videos. Have a great day.